Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thanks for joining us again. Going to be speaking with Mr. John Owen this evening, president and CEO of Atreka. It's a biopharmaceutical company. He, he's joining us to talk about their drug discovery platform and how they're thinking a bit differently about the fight against cancer. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Mr. John Owen, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me, Neil. You're CEO of uh, Atreka. What's your professional background and what is your role there at uh, at Atreka? What's your vision there? Sure. I have um, a little over 30 years of experience in the pharmaceutical and uh, biotech industry. Uh, My role uh, is as president and chief executive officer of Atreka. I joined a little under three years ago um, and that comes um, kind of after a long career in both uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, and biotech, mm-hmm. um, I started my career with a company called Shearing Plow, which is now uh, Merck, on the commercial side in sales and product management. Um, most of my experience has been in oncology. I've been in oncology for a little over uh, 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I ran the oncology business unit at uh, Genentech for a number of years, which is now uh, part of Roche, and before that, Johnson & Johnson. Um, and more recently, in the last 10 years, have been CEO of a couple of um, biotech companies, mm-hmm. um, including uh, Atreka, which we took public um, a couple years back, and um, before that, a company called uh, Relipsa, uh, which was a private company that we took public and launched a product for uh, hyperkalemia. I understand that you're turning conventional cancer therapeutic discovery process pretty much on its head. Talk about this uh, this novel approach, if you would. Yeah, happy to. Um, and actually, that's the thing that really uh, excited me and interested me uh, to join Atreka uh, a couple years back. The part, to, the, the the opportunity to lead a discovery-based, platform-based biotech company focused on oncology. And um, as you say, our approach does sort of turn the traditional approach on its head. The conventional approach to oncology drug discovery is to start with a known target and then figure out how best to drug that particular target. A Atreka's approach is to listen to the human immune system of responding patients in order to identify new targets that the human immune system tells us are important and which we believe would be otherwise uh, likely undiscoverable through conventional methods. So instead of starting with a known target and then competing with other companies to hit that target, we're letting the immune system identify for us novel targets through the antibodies that patients generate uh, as they're responding to their treatment. And just by way of background, Atreka pioneered this drug discovery platform based on a core technology we licensed from Stanford University. And we use that technology to identify antibodies generated during the anti-tumor response in patients with diverse cancer types. So we start with the patients and then look to their immune systems while they're being treated and responding to identify antibodies and through those antibodies, novel targets. So what is this technology that you licensed? So the technology itself um, is really focused on B cells. And what it allows us to do is high throughput sequencing uh, of B cells And by doing this, it allows us to analyze the immune system of patients who are mounting an anti-tumor response and then observing the immune system essentially at what it does best, which is identifying foreign tumor-associated antigens and then generating antibodies against them, just like the body does with viruses or bacteria or other types of pathogens. The immune system also generates antibodies to uh, foreign tumor-associated antigens. Um, So we utilize this high-throughput sequencing of B cells, and B cells are the cells responsible for making antibodies. 
So by looking at populations of related B cells over time, we can use this information to select B cells and their antibodies for further evaluation um, and identification as uh, possible uh, uh, therapeutic uh, drugs. Is it effective in um, all types of cancer, say blood cancers, as well as solid tumors, or is it specifically for one or the other? Oh, it's a great question. Um, and it is possible to find tumor-associated antigens that are to hematologic cells. Our approach has really been on uh, solid tumors. Mm -hmm. And part of the way we've industrialized this uh, technology to make a drug uh, discovery platform out of it has been to create a repository of uh, patient samples. So we get samples from patients through non-interventional studies done under an IRB, um, and then we capture uh, those samples across, uh, at this point, over 30 different tumor types. So we're really looking for um, uh, antibodies across a, a diverse set of patients. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, what we find is that while an antibody uh, evolved in the course of a patient's response to a single tumor type, as is the case with our lead antibody, ATRC-101, which arose within a patient with adenocarcinoma of the lung, it's actually reactive with tumor from across multiple tumor types. Mm -hmm. So ATRC-101 uh, reacts to uh, um, tumor uh, sample from lung cancer, breast cancer, ovarian, uh, and colorectal cancers, as well as melanoma. And one important distinction here is that we're, while we're finding the antibody through the B cell of an individual patient, we're looking for antibodies that are reactive to tumors across groups of patients. So we're not concerned with finding antibodies that are finding an antigen that was specific to that patient, but rather shared tumor antigens that large groups of patients, and in some cases across multiple tumor types, will have. And we think that that gives us the opportunity to, to treat uh, large and diverse uh, populations of cancer patients. What's on the horizon for Treka's pipeline developments uh, in this coming, in, well, in this new year? Yeah, um, this is going to be an exciting year for us. Uh, so maybe first with, with uh, ATRC 101, we're, we're in the clinic, um, and it has a novel uh, target and novel mechanism of action, which is a great example of what the platform can generate. Um, it's an engineered version of a patient antibody discovered with our, our platform. Um, and in this case, the antibody binds to a target, which is, novel in cancer and appears selective for tumor over normal tissue. Um, in preclinical testing, it elicited an immune response um, that was comprised of both the innate and adaptive components of the immune system and demonstrated potent anti-tumor effect in animals. So we took it forward into a phase 1B trial. So um, one of the most important things we have going on right now um, is ATRC 101 in the clinic. Um, and so we're in this phase 1B dose escalation trial um, in patients with those tumor types that I mentioned before, lung, breast, ovarian, uh, colorectal, and a type of melanoma called acral melanoma. Um, and that study is ongoing. We're in the dose ascending portion of the trial, so um, utilizing the study to identify dose-limiting uh, toxicities as well as um, define a randomized phase two dose. Safety is the primary endpoint, um, and this is a heterogeneous and heavily pretreated patient population, um, but that's often the case for oncology phase one trials. So what we expect to see around mid-year um, is uh, an, uh, an HRC 101 uh, summary data uh, around mid-year that would include uh, safety information that we've seen in the dose ascending portion of the trial, um, but also we're evaluating for signs of efficacy in terms of tumor size reduction uh, as well as signs of biological activity through tumor and biopsy samples. So we expect to have some 
uh, top line results from the phase 1B portion of the trial. Um, and then we also plan to start uh, two combination studies this year, one with anti-PD-1, which is a checkpoint inhibitor that is used extensively in oncology now. It's a form of uh, immuno-oncology treatment um, that uh, essentially um, potentiates the activity of T cells. Um, and we will basically combine with that to direct that T cell activity to the tumor um, as we demonstrated in preclinical models, uh, models. But also we're looking to combine ATRC1 with uh, chemotherapy. So we're planning both types of um, combination studies. And then we have a lot going on in terms of the uh, early pipeline as well. Um, if you like, I can comment on that a bit uh, too. Please do. In addition to ATRC 101, we have what is now uh, a growing hit library of more than 2,000 human antibodies that bind to non-autologous tumor tissue. So bind to tumor tissue across groups of patients and do so selectively or preferentially. Right? We wouldn't be interested in an antibody that bound to tumor, but also uh, was found to bind to a lot of normal tissue as well. So these tumor preferential or tumor selective antibodies um, make a, a, a great starting point for the development of potential uh, therapeutics. And we have a great opportunity to take some of those antibodies forward and combine them with so-called weaponization technologies. And these are approaches such as antibody drug conjugates, uh, which utilize our antibodies as warheads to deliver potent targeted small molecule drugs to the tumor. So you're familiar with chemotherapy, which is given systemically um, and is not directed to the tumor. And so chemotherapy typically is limited by a number of uh, systemic side effects. With antibody drug conjugation, you're basically taking a very small amount of a very potent toxin, and then you're essentially attaching it or conjugating it to your antibody and the antibody will basically take it, deliver it to the tumor. Um, there are other approaches uh, that uh, are intended to essentially engineer the antibodies to engage with the human immune system um, and thereby elicit immune engagement and tumor destruction. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually have examples of both of these going up uh, into in vivo evaluation currently. Where can our listeners get some more information online about these uh, approaches, these different techniques that we've been talking about, uh, Atreka, and the uh, clinical developments that are going on there? Oh, sure. My pleasure. Uh, listeners can go to the company website at atreka.com, and they will find there more information, including links to publications as well as scientific and corporate uh, presentations. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on the program, John. It's uh, been a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Great. Thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with John Orwin, President and CEO of Atreka. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download a SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 